All right, now we're on to number four. Number four, study the following pseudocode written for an algorithm. The line numbers are for reference only. Okay, thanks. State exactly what the algorithm does for four marks. This is a lot of writing, a lot of words. So let's go through the algorithm. This is something that is on the syllabus. You definitely have to know how to do this. Syllabus wise, how to tell them in words, in narrative, how our actual algorithm works, which is a good exercise. So I think it's a good question. It's not a bad thing. All right, so we set any temperature on the Celsius and Fahrenheit to zero. Enter one for Fahrenheit to Celsius or two for Celsius to Fahrenheit, right? So we try to calculate um, temperature. I hope you know what Celsius and Fahrenheit is. I hope you know. But if you don't know, you probably didn't do physics, probably didn't do chemistry, probably didn't do integrated science. So you probably didn't pay attention. But this is a temperature conversion question, right? All we know is converting temperatures. So to convert the temperature, if the temperature is 1, so if they choose 1 to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, then you ask them to enter it in Fahrenheit, you read it, you calculate it, and then you print it out for them. Now notice I'm saying it out because this is what we're going to write. The reason I'm saying it like this is because we have to write out the whole process. Else, um, enter degrees Celsius and calculate the calculate it in Fahrenheit and print it out. So 1 for Fahrenheit to Celsius and 2 for Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay. This is where you have to use some keywords. Keywords are important. So they're definitely looking for prompts the user to choose the temperature conversion that they would like to do if the user chooses one they would put in no they would be prompted but you have to use words like prompt they would be prompted to enter the temperature in what is temperature in fahrenheit and the algorithm would calculate the temperature in celsius and display it all right and if the user enters two they would enter the temperature in celsius and it would be displayed in fahrenheit and then the program it Right, so for Polax, you're explaining that they'll prompt the user what one if statement does, what the next if statement does. So this this is kind of spot on. The only problem is with this question is actually you don't have to enter two for uh, to calculate for Celsius to Fahrenheit because it's only checking for the number one. So you can put one and it will do this one, and then you can put any other number because all they have here is else. Else, else. And else could be any other number. It doesn't have to be two. But we ain't gonna fight them now and that probably later on the question they ask you about it. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. I complete the IPO chart for the pseudocode from A on page 16. So the IPO chart breaks down a question into input, process, and output. And if you all are not sure how what an IPO chart is, I have a free playlist in my app called Learn It. Learn It. Go on the Play Store, go on the App Store, look for that app. Learn it by Make It Simple TT, or you go to Make It Simple TT.com for slash learn it, or you can just Google Learn It by Make It Simple TT, which is my brand, right? Learn IT. I have a whole playlist that explains algorithms from start to finish. And if you've never seen anything about the IPO chart before, then that playlist could explain it, and it's totally free. And inside the app, it's available also. If you go through that whole playlist and you still don't understand and you need some very, very specific detailed explanations, then you might want to check out your crash course, which is available from April the 1st every single year around that time, because that's our exam time. And that crash course has everything in the theory and it also has everything in algorithms that's explained in great detail also in all of the videos. And we have past papers that we do. We do the last 10 past papers. You can sign up for that. You can sign up for the theory bootcamp if you don't understand the theory very well. Or you can just sign up for everything because you never had a teacher. And now watching this paper has you going crazy because you don't understand anything. In probably about a month, if you go through this whole crash course, you might be able to pull up the past. Maybe pull up a two. And I mean, if you have a little bit of knowledge and common sense, you might be able to pull up the one just with all the crash course information. So if you want all the crash course stuff, you can WhatsApp 308-8799 and you're good.
And for the people who are watching this in Form 4, because the teacher gave you this in an exam and you came here looking for the answers and the teacher gave you this past paper to do as a homework assignment. And you were like, let me go and see if anybody will cut this past paper because I want to get two on homework assignment. But I don't really understand what I'm doing. Well, I have IT classes too. All right, so the IT classes, WhatsApp, the same number, and you can find out over the classes. Basic standard and pro. Basic will give you everything that you need, but you won't be getting any recordings. Um, standard and pro has the recordings. Pro, however, is for people who specifically need help with the SBA. So if you're struggling with the SBA, you might want to check the pro, especially the programming part of the SBA. So let's go through what the IPO chart is input, process, output. What do we have to put into the system for it to work? We have to put in a uh, choice. So we have to put in uh, something called temp, which is one. So this is uh, this is definitely, I'll, I'll put i next to the things that have to be inputted, right? So read temp, this is an input. Then when you read it, then you have to read the Fahrenheit. So this is an input also. So those are the two inputs. Oh no, you could read Celsius also. So input read temp, read Fahrenheit, read Celsius. So the inputs are temp, Fahrenheit, and Celsius. Now, we don't know which choice they're going to make, so those are the possible inputs I can have. So we want to check for the possible inputs. Yeah. The processing is the math that you're going to do. So the processing is here and here. So Fahrenheit is equal to, I saw to zoom out a little bit to see it. Cell, but I can have weird though. Okay. All right, cell is equal to, come on man, FAH minus 32 multiplied by 59. Okay. F h minus 32 multiplied by 5 1 okay that's one processing and then the next one is Fahrenheit is cell multiplied by, by Fahrenheit equal to cell multiplied by 9 over 5 I can't put, you can't put the actual fraction eh? don't, put the, don't put the actual fraction put 9 slash 5 plus 32 All right those are the two processes processes are anything that they do, do maths right Maths is what you're looking for when you think about processing. So anything that's mathematical, as you should process in, you usually know because there is an equal sign. So wherever there's an equal sign or this kind of arrow thing, in this algorithm, they have arrows. But yeah, usually the arrows or the equal sign will tell you the processing. And then the outputs will be um, either FAH or CEL. You don't have to put all the words because all we're dealing with is the variables here, right? So FAH or CEL. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, FAH. I put FAR here. This supposed to be FAH. FAH or CEL. Yeah. Those, those are the two outputs I could get because you'll get back a value there. All right, so four marks, uh, pretty much. Okay, part C. The pseudocode for the algorithm on page 16 is to be amended for use to use a for loop construct enabling the algorithm to do exactly 10 calculations before two minutes. Yep, students dying here. It's, it's, it's giving a lot of thought and writing and the marks they be they being very stingy with the marks which is um not how they normally are normally they have a lot more marks for certain things but they're being real stingy with the marks because i think they try to stretch out the questions to give students to have students answer a lot more and because they want students to answer a lot more they stretch out the marks so okay cool no problem all right so we want to use our polar construct using a new variable number but i'm happy with it huh? i like this compared to previous exams this paper is one of the better, better paper. Last year's paper was really, really good. The June 2023 paper was very, very good. This one is very, very good also because it tests things that actually test your IT knowledge. Aside from the question that asked you all the maths in the previous question, but um, it actually tests your IT knowledge. And I think that is what we need. We need to be able to test people's IT knowledge and not unnecessary things like if they could write out steps and all that kind of, kind of drama. So IT, IT knowledge. Stating on the variable name number as the loop counter, write two pseudocode statements needed to achieve this. So, um, to do exactly 10 calculations before it minutes. So you have to put four number is equal to one, two, ten, two. Yeah, write the two pseudocode statements needed to achieve this. I don't know what two pseudocode statements to do a for loop. Using a new variable number as the loop counter, Right, the two pseudocode sort of statements needed to achieve this. End for. I uh, guess. <laughs> Even the dog wondering what going on. I'm not too sure what I mean, but basically that's how you write a for loop. So let's write out the for loop, and somewhere inside there, they should give it to me. Did one reason why the for loop is the most appropriate loop constructor used in a scenario? Right. Clearly, because they say they want you to do it for exactly 10. 
So you want to use the word there is a definite. It is a definite loop. And 10 is a definite number, right? So 10 is definitely what they want. Well, there are two types of loops, definite loops and indefinite loop. Indefinite. Indefinite is like while and repeat. Because these, you don't know when they're going to stop because they stop while something is happening or repeat until something is happening. So you don't know when it's going to stop. So that's why it's considered to be indefinite. And a definite loop is one way you know exactly how much times they're going to run, which is like one to 10 and exactly the amount that you want to do. All right, seamless plug for the crash course, which will teach you all of this. Just in case you didn't know, you know. There's more to this question, more to this question. Using the variable number as the loop counter, write the four pseudocode statements for a repeat until loop construct to enable the algorithm to do exactly 10 calculations before it terminates. Oh look, the same thing that it asked for. Okay. Four pseudocode statements for a repeat until. Okay. You'll have to say repeat. No. Okay. Let me set the number. Number is equal to one. You'll have to set the number to one. And say repeat. Um, I'll put things like other logic or repeat program until number is equal to 10. Where are the four pseudocode statements? I'm not 100% sure, but hmm, yeah, that should be it. Well, this, this part here I call logic. This is the actual logic of the program to do the, um, to do the whole Fahrenheit conversion. So all of this here is what I'm calling logic, right? But they don't want you to write about the whole program. They just want you to write out how it would work. So you'd repeat and then until, right? Okay. Jane wants to establish a wired network with desktop computers spread across all floors of the office building. There's four hardware devices that Jane would need to accomplish this. Oh, just so they jump to networking, buddy? Wow. It's kind of fast. They didn't even give you a, they didn't even give you a warning. It's like part D is programming and part E, networking. All right. Four hardware devices we need to accomplish this. You want to uh, install a wired network with desktop computers spread across all floors in the building. You need a router. You need a switch. You need a network interface card, NIC. Um, what other device you need? Those three things is all you need. You need a router, switch, and a network. network. Network interface card or connect to the switch, and the switch connected to the router. They didn't, say, they didn't say anything about the internet, and they didn't say anything about a server. So I am guessing that they wanted to access the internet, so they might want it to power modem. But the modem is to connect to the internet. There's no other hardware device that we know of any syllabus. Do I have seen anything? You can't buy a hub because a hub and a switch. A switch is like a better hub. Why would you want to put in a hub? Okay, maybe they're looking for a hub also. Because they can't say cable because the cable is not a hardware device. Cable is transmission media. Media. Mm, uh, yeah, throw everything you know about networking inside here. Any device that you can think of, throw it in. But I know for sure these are the, these are the definite ones I need. Router will connect to the switch, switch will connect to the network interface card on the computers. There's not much more that you could put. Because they didn't say anything about the server to get files, and they didn't say anything about the internet. So the modem is what will get you to the internet, and a hub is if you don't use a switch. But it's very rare that you use a switch and a hub on a network, because a hub is pretty dumb, a switch is smart. Okay. Let's take it between the internet and the World Wide Web. So the internet is a network of networks and the world wide web is the um collection of hyperlinked web pages yeah we'll go with that network of networks or WANs. yeah all right so the internet is a bunch of ones connected to each other and the www world wide web is a collection of hyperlinked web pages there's a difference you know the acronym url is uniform resource locator Either you know it, or you don't know it. Consider the URL above CXE. Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha. I'll have a URL for you. Make it simple. TT called flash register. That's the website that you go to to register for classes or the crash course or anything that, I, that, that we have yet. All right, so let's break it down. HTTPS, that is the protocol. Um cxc.org is the domain and student results is the um, web page or subdirectory. Usually the last last thing in, in the URL is a page. 
So normally this will be like TXT results dot HTML or dot PHP or whatever it is. So usually it's the final page that you go to because this is where the actual HTML code is going to be. This this line here will be the HTML code. So this is the actual web page. Um we put HTML web page. Yeah, HTML web page. But it could also be a subdirectory that has another page inside of it, which is like a folder structure. But one of the two should work. If you didn't understand that too well, go to make it simple dt.com forward slash register. You can register for normal classes if you in form 4. Um, 308-8799. That's the WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp that number. If you in form 4 and you want classes for the next year or you want to do IT privately, we usually start classes in June and we go from June to the following year. In one year, you can learn the whole IT syllabus and do the exam privately and get a one if you want to or you could do something else yeah all right so that is it for this paper and it wasn't a bad paper it was kind of long i just know there are things that are being tested now which is good that students are going to have problems with because people don't pay attention to all of the details in the theory and paying attention to the details in the theory is one of the most important things now because they're not just asking you to regurgitated information they're actually asking you to show your understanding of the information so if you're looking for classes that could help you understand the information properly you can check us out make it simple tt.com pulse app register so check out the app make sure you download the app all the information inside there all the past papers from here go back all of those in the app also and you'll be able to get yourself in a gear for your it exam or for your mock exam that you know is going to be this paper and you're going to look really smart because I don't know, you copied down the same answer that I had. And then you'll come and get back to the comments and say that the answer that I had, your teacher gave it wrong. And yeah. Okay, see you in the next video.